SAS Pensions. Why did Bronwyn Vernicum, an established property investor, set up her SAS pension? And what can you learn from her experience? Check out this video. It's why did you set up your pension? And I should say SAS pension, of course, but why yeah. did you set up your SAS pension? Well, multiple reasons, but Kevin will remember that I hesitated for probably nearly two years, actually. <laughs> and I hesitated because I didn't feel I knew enough about how SASs operate. I'd been in Lloyds Bank for 21 years. So you can imagine the sort of transfer value of a of a 21 year final salary defined benefit pension. Um, you know, that's that's a lot of money. Um, and so I was a little bit risk averse because as a banker, you're very risk averse. So as I was progressing through my property learning, um, I was actually benefiting from other people's SASs, SIPs and SASs actually, because um, I, need, I ran out of money very quickly as you do for my deposits, for my deals. So I met Kevin because I, I found somebody that wanted to lend me money as an investor into a deal and he had a SIP and Kevin with Kevin and Kevin said, you know, let me show you what, what they're all about. So long story short, <laughs> I was borrowing from people's sasses. So I sort of got to know from the other side of the table. And then through a lot of coaching and, and education with wealth builders, I recognized the value to me of transferring that. Um, in terms of what I could do with that and how I could grow that pension significantly and certainly beat what my critical yield was if I left it where it was. And the the, the, the percentage was, I think, 5% per annum was my critical yield. If I did nothing, well, I'd have a lot of fees to pay for a start, as Kevin's mentioned, mm. but 5% per annum, I knew I could actually do a lot better than the pension fund and I could grow my business by using that money as well and so I have the loan backs and I have um, I lend to other people and I invest in different things so all within the rules and there's plenty of those but it's uh, it's another business as we said earlier it, it's mm. I've got my property limited companies I have my um trading business, guest house, my, I have my SaaS and I have my education business. So my SaaS is a, it's a big business, you know. I mean, from, from that, just adding on from that, Bronwyn, because when yeah. property investors, and we talk about this on the other brilliant show, which is on the first Monday of every month. What's uh, that called? I think that's called the Ooh. Property Expert Panel, ah, isn't it, Bronwyn? It is. Which yes. uh, is a legendary show. So if you haven't seen it before, you, you, you're missing out, to be honest. Um, but <laughs> as we know, when you are buying property, and we talk about the property expert panel because we have a lot of people that are getting into property. And the biggest question we have is the fact that they can't find funding for their projects. Mm -hmm. So they go out to these networking events, and we all know that people go to these networking events, they get all buoyed up about, yes, I'm an investor, I'm a property developer. I will give you a loan, provided it's 1% per month, which is 12% per annum. Now, if you go to your own SAS pension, you can be your own bank and put the money interest that you have, which is, again, a corporation tax deduction, but the money is going into your pension. Yeah. It's, an, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? it? Well, there's always a brainer. Like anything, there's a brainer. You, one of the questions you asked before was who can use them, and I'd say you know, you've got to be willing to take responsibility and control. Mm -hmm. So that's why you know, the, the evidence needs to be there. And, and I think it took Bronwyn that period of time, and that's fine. It normally does take people a period of time to to get used to the language even because it's, mm. as I said, it wouldn't win any marketing prizes, you know, small self-administered scheme. You know, what is it? Software as a service? Is it part of the art forces? You know, what the hell is this SAS thing? Yeah. It's been around since 1973, but it's still the best kept secret out there because pensions are grey, dull, and boring until you discover that they're not. And once you discover that, uh, it can make a huge difference to the compounding effect of the work you do. Mm -hmm. Because you've got tax deductions on the one hand, tax-free returns on the other, no income tax, no corporation tax, sounds like. No inheritance tax. No inheritance tax and no CGT. So 
you know, that's an awful lot of taxes to be free of, to be a secret, I think. So thank you, Simon, and, um, you know, to, for getting this message out there. So I'm very yeah, well, When I started with mine, you know, there were very few people talking about this stuff. There weren't the groups that I see now that are sort of part of the education process. People didn't really talk about it much. So it was all a bit, a bit sort of cloak and dagger. But there is quite a process, Kevin, isn't there, to actually get through the HMRC. You have to have approval. You have to obviously see an IFA. This is a big decision. This is not something you do by listening to this and saying, oh, I'll have one of those. You know, you've yeah, it takes about nine right. months, doesn't it now, Kevin, if my understanding? Um, well, you've got two you've got two distinct steps you know, for approval, uh, mm. depending on where the money's coming from. One is HMRC. Now, you'd be surprised to learn they don't have a service standard. There's no SLA <laughs> in the HMRC. Shocking how you should yeah. say that. Well, we hold them to no account whatsoever. So mm. we've had it as low as six weeks. It's now currently running at about 90 days. However, okay. the, the challenge is less with HMRC. It's more with where the money is today. Mm. So if you've got a, like Bronwyn, you know, a significant sum of money, but with a defined benefit, you need to go through an advisory process for that, and that can take months. If you've got money with certain organizations, you know, some of them will uh, literally fight tooth and nail to hang on to that money. Uh, mm -hmm. One organization, uh, which shall remain nameless, um, wrote letters to uh, potential SAS candidates saying, we've been managing money for decades. We look after X billion of pounds. We, we, we surely know more than you do about running pensions. You should leave your money with us. You know, this is the sort of thing that they do. So there's there's now a process where as long as you've either followed good advice or uh, there's a special website that you can go to and you have a conversation, you book a, a conversation with them, they just want to make sure you're not being scammed. What we don't do at Wealth Builders is ever suggest investments. We don't recommend people they should do this or should do that. It's about empowering them to do what they want to do. But nonetheless, because SAS is so uh, freeing, so powerful, you can do so many more things. That it's, it, it's, it's definitely being used by some people to promote it, to promote investments that they profit from. So one must be very cautious about that. Having said that, going back to your question about time, I'd say currently the run rate would be a bad signal. Hopefully that video was useful for you, but please do not stop there. There are plenty of videos that I know that will help you build your wealth whilst reducing your tax liability. And in this video, well, this is the one I think you should be watching right now.